we tend to spend a lot of time in our vehicles. So today we are discussing medical preparedness for our vehicles along with some additional tools and resources that are helpful to have in your vehicle at all times. Before we get going here, I want to take a second to remind you to subscribe to the channel so that you are alerted of any future videos that we post. If you find this video helpful, leave us a like, that'll help us out. And if you have any questions over any of the stuff that we're going over today, just leave us a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. All right, so let's dive right in. So today we're gonna to be discussing medical preparedness as it relates to our vehicle. Some EDC things that we keep in our vehicle. And so we're gonna talk basically about prepackaged kits. Then we're gonna move into packing your own medical kit and then we're gonna talk about some additional tools that are force multipliers for medical care and rescue based out of your vehicle. That'll be toward the end of the video. We're gonna go over a bunch of tools. So stay tuned till the end of the video and we'll talk about a bunch of the extra tools that can help you in your medical treatment as well. So first off, let's go over a couple categories of things. So for my vehicles, what I do is I keep a medical kit in each one of my vehicles. So no matter what vehicle I jump in at any time, I know I've at least got some basics in there, some trauma supplies, some basic band-aids, some basic medications, uh, that type of thing. Then on top of that, if I'm gonna be out for a while running errands further from home, if I'm gonna be taking a road trip somewhere, then I take a go bag on top of the medical kit that stays in the car. So for me personally, I have the uh, Minuteman trauma kits in each one of my vehicles, and then I keep a responder bag as my go bag. This has been modified a little bit, so I've got some X shears instead of just the basic shears that come with this. Um, I've got a cardiology stethoscope and a few other upgrades in here along with some additional trauma supplies. So I've got a little bit more than what comes stocked with it, um, but I'm not gonna spend a lot of time reviewing that. We have a link that we'll put up here here that goes to our video that discusses the responder bag and some of the things that we have packed in that kit. But that's how I like to do EDC for vehicles. So if I'm just doing something close to home, I know that I've at least got my Minuteman kit. Um, I also usually have my kicker ankle kit with me as well. So there's some more trauma supplies there. But then if I go out further, I bring a little bit more with me and that's where I'll have most of the stuff in my go bag. Um, and I can take that with me so I can do blood pressures, artificial ventilations, and that kind of thing if needed. So first off, let's take a look at the uh, Minuteman trauma kit. So this is a trauma kit that we built based off some of the things that we were already carrying in our vehicle kits. And we put this together as kind of a rugged vehicle kit uh, for guys that are doing overlanding, off-roading, for people that just want to stick it in their car for uh, trips and emergencies, and just as a good EDC for your vehicle. This is in a rugged Pelican case, so it's really durable. It's also fairly flat, so you can slide this under the seat in your vehicle. Uh, you can stick it in your trunk. With these slots on the side, you can also strap this to a head rack of a UTV or four-wheeler, um, and that allows you to be able to take this out in the woods as well. Uh, so it's pretty versatile, and it's waterproof, and it's in inside a durable Pelican case. Inside of this, we have this broken into three main categories. As we get this opened here, the first thing that you'll see on this tray is some basic Band-Aids, Steri-Strips, uh, medications, Advil, Tylenol, Benadryl. Uh, we have antibiotic ointment, we have sting relief, and all that in these little Ziplocs here on this tray. Um, this is a little bit of a mess because this is actually one that we use in our vehicles. So we have used stuff out of it, replaced stuff, and so it's not as pretty as the first day you get it when it comes in the packaging. Um, up top, we have some X shears, trauma shears. Uh, we have some rolls of gauze. We have emergency blanket. We have uh, gloves, so some body substance isolation. We have four by fours, and then we also have some burn tech burn dressing in the back as well. So we have kind of our minor injuries on the tray. We have our more moderate injuries up here in the top part. And then if you open this up and you simply remove this tray, you have all your severe bleeding right here easily accessible. So we have some quick clot combat gauze. We have wound packing gauze to back that up or for a secondary wound. We have a pressure dressing to hold that gauze in place. We have a cat tourniquet 
take this out of the plastic when you put it in your kit. That's always a good, uh, good option there. And then hyphen chest seals. We got a twin pack of those down here on the bottom. The Minuteman has three main compartments and it'll take care of anything from your basic injuries uh, where you have a kid that has a scrape and needs a Band-Aid all the way to you pull up on a car wreck and a guy's bleeding out and you need to apply a tourniquet. So the Minuteman kind of covers the bases as far as most things you'll need inside a vehicle. Now, every time I post one of these videos about here's a medical kit or what you should have in a medical kit, everybody starts complaining about the cost. Well, good equipment is expensive. I'm just gonna say that. And when we pack it inside a durable Pelican case, the cost of the case itself is expensive. The cost of the tourniquet itself is $30 just for the tourniquet. Some people say I can get a whole first aid kit for $30. Well, that's great, but you're not gonna have a good, decent tourniquet in it um, because you can't possibly have a full first aid kit with a cat tourniquet for $30 because the tourniquet itself costs $30. So just because you're getting a cheaper kit doesn't mean that you're gonna have as robust of a kit and it doesn't mean that it's actually gonna have a bunch of tools in there needed to save a life uh, if you were called upon to do so. But let's say you wanted to stock your own vehicle kit. So let's uh, take this down to the basics. Let's see what we can do bare bones to make this a uh, solid medical kit um, with some of the basics in it for a much cheaper price tag. So rather than our Pelican case, let's go a little bit cheaper with some Tupperware. And again, you could fill this with a lot of the cheaper items like gauze and some things that would be great to have a lot of. Um, but here, since we're trying to keep it really bare bones and minimal, uh, we have it only about half packed. But we have our Sterilite Tupperware. And inside here, we've got some basics. So we have a couple pairs of gloves. We have wound packing gauze and a ETD put together. So this is not quick clot. This is not your $45 quick clot pack. This is a $4 wound packing gauze, rubber banded to a $4 uh, ETD dressing. So this is your trauma wound packing gauze along with a pressure dressing rubber banded together so you can grab these quickly if you need to pack a wound or stop some bleeding but this is a cheaper alternative to something like a quick clot still have the cat tourniquet we can't get away from having a good tourniquet in our kit highly recommend you at least have one of these in your kit somewhere. If you already have one of these in your ankle kit or an EDC that you carry on your person, you may opt to keep this out of your vehicle kit, but I would recommend if you can afford it to stick one in one of these kits as well. Here we have a uh, mini module uh, that we stock here at Six Echo. Basically it's a Ziploc bag with a whole bunch of Band-Aid Steri strips, uh, medications, antibiotic ointment, sting relief pads, and all of that's packaged in this small little Ziploc. So you can either do that yourself, you can go to our website, see what we stock in it, and go buy your own stuff to put in there, or you can buy these on our website and throw one of these in there. These are pretty economical to add to your kit. We have some rolls of gauze. We have a twin pack of chest seals. Another way to get by with a little bit cheaper version of this is to simply have some Ziploc bags that you can use as the chest seal with some duct tape or Gorilla Tape to be able to tape those down. These stick much better and are much easier to apply and they're not that expensive. So I would recommend going with a hyphen uh, vented chest seal, but if you are absolutely trying to cut cost, you can use some plastic and some tape and you can try to get by that way. Then I have some gauze, some four by fours and combine pads that are simply stuck inside a Ziploc bag. The Ziploc bag is a great way to store these things to keep it all organized and it's still super cheap. So um, I also have a cheaper pair of trauma shears thrown in here as well. But overall, this is a economy version of a EDC kit for a vehicle. So if you don't want a spring for a more expensive, fully stocked uh, medical kit for your vehicle, you can build your own using some Tupperware, some Ziploc bags, and then uh, being a little bit more cost efficient as you're going through and picking what specific items you wanna carry in these kits. All right, so those are the basics that cover what you need in your vehicle. You want some things for minor injuries, just some regular Band-Aids, Advil, that type of thing. You want some gauze for some more moderate injuries. Someone gets a laceration, you wanna be able to address that wound. You wanna be able to keep it clean, stop some bleeding. But you also want some things for severe trauma. You pull up on a car wreck and there's a severe arterial bleed. You wanna be able to pack a wound, throw a tourniquet on, apply some chest seals. You wanna be able to do some more of those life-saving interventions with the things that you have packed in your vehicle EDC. So let's talk for a minute about some tools that we should keep in our vehicles that will be force multipliers as we are trying to rescue or provide aid to someone as we arrive upon a scene, 
a vehicle wreck or go to help a buddy um, that needs some help, what are some of the tools that we can have with us that allow us to be able to provide aid better to some of these people? The first thing that I think you should always have is some form of glass breaker. I really like the Rescue Me tool. This is a, a small, cheap, economical little tool. It's got a spring-loaded window punch on it, um, and it also has, you can pull this away from the little clip that it sits in, and it's got a seatbelt cutter to be able to quickly cut seatbelts. The main thing that I use this for is for the uh, window punch. I've pulled up on car wrecks before where somebody was trapped in the car, couldn't get out, and I've actually used these to be able to pop the window to make access to them to make sure they're all right and to be able to help get them out of the vehicle. I usually will keep these on my key ring, so all my key chains have these on there so I have one with me at all times but it's not a bad idea to keep this clipped on a medical bag or hanging inside your vehicle somewhere because you also could get in a predicament where you can't get out and having one of these inside your car within arm's reach to be able to punch the glass and get yourself out is beneficial as well. Another thing that's good to have if you don't already have one in your medical kit is a good pair of shears. I really like the egg shears. These are solid shears. I've been using them for a while. They retain a really sharp edge. They're a lot more durable than cheap trauma shears um, and they can cut through wires and all sorts of things. Uh, so it's a solid option to keep with you to be able to cut through seat belts, uh, to be able to cut uh, clothes off of an injury um, and be able to even cut wires and thin sheet metal and that type of stuff. So it's a great option to have in your vehicle and can really help you trying to make access to a patient. Something else that's beneficial to have that you should already have in your vehicle, but that's some type of flashlight. Um, and specifically, I'm gonna talk about the pin light here for a minute. You can use this for assessing someone's pupils. If someone's been in a car wreck and you're assessing for a head injury or a head bleed, you're gonna to wanna to assess the pupils and that'll tell you if there is uh, pressure on the brain that is causing the pupils to react abnormally. Um, so I keep this in my medical gear. Um, this is a Streamlight pin light, but it's also bright enough to where you can use it as a work light to work under. You should keep a better flashlight in your vehicle for roadside emergencies and that type of thing as well. Um, but having this in your medical gear is a force multiplier. Uh, when you don't have your flashlight on you and you need a little extra light, uh, this doubles as both a pin light for assessing pupils and also a work light to work under. Uh, this has a momentary switch on the back and if you tighten this down on the back, it pushes that momentary switch down onto the battery and now you've got a constant light to be able to work under. Something else that's good to have in your vehicle, and most people already have this, but that's a good pair of sunglasses. Um, I actually have my old pair of Oakleys that are all banged up. Um, I use these more as safety glasses than I do sunglasses, but you should have a pair of these with you if you're going to break glass on another vehicle to make a rescue. When you break that glass, there's a lot of these little chips of glass that will fly off, so you wanna make sure to protect yourself, have some eye protection. Uh, you don't want to get a piece of glass in your eye because as you're making a rescue, that'll make it a lot more complicated for you. And now you become a patient as well. Um, and now you got to take care of that after the fact. So protect yourself, throw some glasses on. That can be very beneficial. Another thing that's good to have within arm's reach is a good pair of gloves. So I've got um, some Husky gloves here from Home Depot. Uh, you can use mechanics gloves. I like these because this specific pair is leather. Um, and when I'm doing any sort of rope work, rappelling or anything like that, I like the leather gloves uh, because it won't be a synthetic on synthetic. It won't heat up, it won't melt the rope, won't melt my gloves. So leather's a good option for rope gloves. So that's kind of what I gravitate toward. A good set of mechanics gloves will work just as well if we're talking about being able to do basic auto extrication, remove somebody from a vehicle, and just to generally protect your hands when you're working around sharp objects. I like to uh, take these and I will just throw a carabiner that I also have my webbing on, but I will just hook this on the strap here, and then I can hang this on the back of my seat. I can hang these off of a bag, and now I've got my gloves with me without having to have an additional piece of hardware. Some people put little clips on there to hold their gloves, but I'll just clip them on a carabiner, hang these off my pack or my belt, um, and I have these with me now. So let's move into the webbing now, since we already have this in front of us. So I have here 20 feet of webbing, and I will keep these in my medical kits. I keep this stuff in my bunker gear as a firefighter. Um, I keep this all around. I use this for a lot of stuff. I mean, you can use it just for lashing stuff down in a truck bed, so it comes in handy for a multitude of options. If you use this for utility webbing, like lashing something in your truck bed, I probably wouldn't use it as life safety webbing that you may repel with or create an anchor with. Um, so just keep in mind what you're gonna do with it 
And if you start tearing this stuff up, just make sure that you mark that as utility webbing and you're not using it to put it under a lot of stress. This stuff is rated at 4,000 pounds, so you can use this to uh, pull a vehicle out of a ditch. You would want to double or triple it up um, when you did that. Uh, you can use it to tie stuff down. You can use it to create a hasty harness to be able to pull somebody up an embankment. You can use this itself to pull somebody up an embankment. There's all sorts of different uses for the webbing to be able to uh, move patients, drag patients, and it's just very versatile stuff. So we've done a video on this as well to give you some ideas of what you can use webbing for, the proper knots to tie with webbing. So we'll leave a link to that up here as well. So be sure to check that out. All right, couple more things. Uh, and one of those is a traffic vest. You can find these pretty cheap online. You can find them on eBay. Um, there's a lot of other stores that have these pretty cheap, but just have some sort of high visibility vest is helpful if you stop on the road to help somebody and you are working on the side of the road. You have traffic that may not see you until they're right up on you. So you want every possibility of being seen before a vehicle approaches you. There are so many people and even first responders that are working on the side of the road and end up getting struck by another vehicle. So be seen, have a traffic vest with you, and even if you're not stopping to help somebody else, if you have a flat tire or something goes wrong, um, you wanna have that vest on. So the vest can not only help you as you're providing aid, it can kind of be some preventative uh, measures as well so that you don't get struck by a vehicle, whether you're doing something for an emergency or simply stopping to um, grab something out of the back of your vehicle or do anything on the side of the road. Last but not least, um, a fire extinguisher is a good thing to have in your vehicle. Um, I have some of these easy fire spray extinguishers. Uh, you can, there's several different brands of these, but it's a aerosol can. It's got an extinguishing agent in it. They work really well for uh, stopping fire. And having one of those in your vehicle can prevent your vehicle from burning up. It can keep you from burning up. It can be beneficial to somebody else. If you can catch a fire early, you can have a good chance of putting it out before anybody gets hurt uh, and before the entire vehicle is engulfed. If you wait too long, then this little can's not gonna do you any good. You're gonna need a bunch of water and the vehicle will be fully ruined at that point. So the earlier you can catch a fire, the better off. So this doesn't really fall into medical, but because it's kind of in the realm of rescue and providing aid, I went ahead and threw that in here. So it's always a good idea to have a fire extinguisher in your vehicle. Well, that's it for today. In the future, we will do another video and show you some more prying tools and striking tools that can be used to help get someone out of a vehicle and render aid to someone. We didn't include those in this video this time because we want to be able to show you those tools and show you how to use those tools at the same time rather than just saying, hey, here's some tools. We're not gonna show you how to use them, but um, stay tuned for those. We will have that coming out before long and we'll give you a more in-depth look at how you can be a greater asset to be able to provide aid to someone that's in need. Well, that's it for today. Hope you found this video helpful. Leave us a like, leave us a comment below if you have any questions over any of the stuff we went over. We're gonna leave links to a lot of this stuff in the description below as well, so be sure to check that out if you're wondering about any of the particular items we've talked about. And as always, stay vigilant and stay safe.